So this video is going to be a little bit longer than the other ones, um, but I think it'll be really helpful. I'm going to talk about all of our sponsors and kind of talk about how this whole project evolved, you know, us being a public high school. Um, we really had to have, you know, it, it just wouldn't have happened without uh, the help we've gotten people just behind the scenes, quietly, constantly supporting us. So we're going to talk about that next. So this is sort of the vision. This started in 2018. Um, I can still remember Kelly Knight and I designing this diagram for a grant we were working on. Um, it was our dream. Um, there's the corner of 90 and 1463. We had this vision of the trails and the outdoor classroom and uh, the natural landscape. Um, it's so amazing to me. Uh, we thought it was such a far reach, but here we are, we're almost done. Um, the idea uh, is that we would have a place for kids to learn and to understand a little bit about what they were learning in the classroom and what it meant in real life. And also this idea that we were solving a problem in our community, which was flooding and drought. And, and how kids could actually be engaged in doing that. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. It's really cool. So what we did first is we talked with the Katy Prairie Conservancy and the Wildlife Habitat Federation. So the Katy Conser Prairie Conservancy is a local organization. Um, they are trying to save remnants of the prairie. Believe it or not, but only about 1% of the original prairie that it was in the state of Texas is still alive today. So they are uh, looking at little prairies, big prairies, pocket prairies at schools, etc. Um, we also partnered with the Wildlife Habitat Federation. Jim Willis is the the um, person, the contact person at the Wildlife Habitat Federation. His really interesting story. His passion is really about stewardship of natural resources, uh, primarily soil, soil and uh, pasture land and, and great grazing land. He is a former, was a rice farmer all his life, and he was uh, uh, the first person to get Texas rice into China, which is a kind of interesting story. But he just believes that we have not been good stewards of our land. And so he goes out to farmers in different areas all over Texas and helps them restore pasture land and grazing land and ranch land into a uh, native prairie. And so here's a picture of him uh, at his, uh, he has a research facility and a ranch at Incat Springs. And here's some plants. This is the above ground part. Here's this, and there's the roots. Remember we talked about how amazing these uh, plants were and you can really see how deep these are actual prairie plants from his, his uh, prairie at his, on his property. While we were talking about all this, um, we got a shout out from Black Bear Diner. They were building their restaurant in Katy and they came to Katy High School and said, you know, how can we help you? We would like to help you with an educational project, uh, something that maybe would be related to Harvey. And of course this project just fit right in. So they really did lay the financial foundation for us being able to hire the Wildlife Habitat Federation to help us with things like tillage and the equipment that needed to go into that. Um, all of the physical part of putting seed in the ground, they really uh, laid the foundation for all of that. As we started uh, working on this project and it started to evolve, people started calling City Hall and calling the school, what's going on, why are you not mowing? Um, really just kind of wondering what was going on. So Keep Katie Beautiful came to us. Uh, we gave a presentation at one of their meetings and then um, they talked to us. It's like, well, I think what we need is signage. And so they partnered with Fast Signs. They uh, went in and both together built, bought, and built these gorgeous signs for us. Jess uh, Washburn was the one that designed the sign. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and they put those on one on Highway 90, one on Highway 1463, and did all of that for us. Um, the next thing we did is we wanted to start reaching out to other conservation organizations and kind of tell them about our project, have them highlight it so maybe we could get some more sponsors. So we applied for what's called the Conservation Wrangler uh, Award. 
Now, the Conservation Wrangler is an award given to large projects that are recognized throughout the state of Texas by an organization called Texan by Nature. Uh, their motto is Be Big, Be Bold, Be Texan by Nature. And it's an organization uh, started by Laura Bush. And it says here in Texas, our, na our natural resources are finite, but our ingenuity is infinite. At Texan by Nature, we harness that can-do spirit to take care of the land, water, and wildlife that sustain our state's people and prosperity. And so what they did was we did not win the Conservation Angler, Wrangler Award, but they called us um, and said, look, we love your project. It's such a great project. How can we help? Um, if you go on to the, the, the Texan by Nature site, uh, basically what they did after that phone call is they, uh, we are now a Texan by Nature certified site. And they got us in contact with a sponsor. The idea with this organization is to get conservation and industry together. So shortly after that phone call, we uh, got a, a call from CMEX. Now CMEX, is, uh, we have an office in Katy here, um, but they are a large uh, cement company all over the world. And they do a lot of conservation in the state of Texas. They have another prairie that they're working on in Brenham. And they said, we really love your project. What can we do to help? So at the time, we were trying to figure out about the trails because we kind of felt like before we did anything, any planting, anything, we had to have trails out in the prairie so that students can navigate their way through there safely. So um, we kind of consulted with them. Do we do crushed granite? Do we do mulch? We went through kind of several months of, of this process. And we finally decided on mulch because we didn't know. We wanted to make sure that the ideas that we had for our uh, placement, we didn't know if we wanted it to be permanent. So they bought everything. They bought the mulch. They paid for the deliveries, the whole nine yards for the first round. For the second round of mulch, we've done two rounds. Um, we were able to use some resources from Alexo Eco Challenge grant that we got. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then M&M Landscaping came and we decided, again, remember my last video about the landscape fabric, kind of a lesson learned. They brought a crew out and they laid down all of the fabric for us. So we wanted that to be all ready before the kids came out and laid. Um, so all together, there are four semi truck full of mulch for 250 yards of trails. Now, at the same time this was happening and we're trying to lay mulch and all this stuff, we realized we really needed to uh, get some tools. We were having kids bring tools and teachers and it was really getting difficult. So the Friendship Garden Club of Katy had us out to give a talk about the prairie. And after that talk, they decided to sponsor us for their Christmas project. They basically filled our shed full of wheelbarrows and some tools for the students to use. This is a picture of them actually putting that, those things into the shed. Then at the same time, um, we received notice, we had applied for the Science Teachers Association of Texas Innovation Award. It's a grant, it was the first year they'd given this grant, they recognized four projects in the entire state of Texas that showed innovation in teaching, and it was a monetary grant. So we combined part of this award with their donation and basically filled our shed with tools. We have enough tools now that we can have 10 groups of students out there doing all kinds of work. It's been wonderful. The shed was given to us by the district. It was an abandoned shed that nobody was using, so they moved that out there, and we have this awesome shed. Wagons were donated by the Friendship Garden Club of Katy and all of that, so that was really awesome. The next thing we did is we looked at um, one of the recommendations we had from the Wildlife Habitat Federation was not just to plant seeds, which is the primarily the most of the plants that are out there are from seed, but to have some uh, proportion of mature plants. So we applied for the KDISD Educational Foundation Grant and we got it and we were able to buy 350 mature uh, prairie plants. We got these from Morningstar Prairie Plants. Um, he gets all of his seed, seed growth, all of his seeds on his property. He gets them from prairies all over the area. 
it was a wonderful day. We had all about probably about 180 environmental science students out there. Um, and all of the work-based learning kids came out there with us. It was just fantastic. The Katy Prairie Conservancy volunteers, we had about eight volunteers that spent the whole day teaching the students how to properly plant the plants. It was just an absolutely wonderful day. I'll, I'll always remember that day. The next thing we did, um, we had a group of students, and this was uh, happening, actually started in the fall of 2019. A group of nine students decided to apply for our, the Lexus Eco Challenge. So the Lexus Eco Challenge is in support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda each year. The Lexus Eco Challenge invites students in grades 6 through 12 to tackle environmental issues in their community, submit an action plan, and com uh, compete nationally, and that's what they did. So this prairie, what they focused on, is how can prairies help the Katy community with flooding and drought? They met with the, uh, the Harris County flood control people. They met with um, the city government. They talked to experts in the field and they put together a uh, presentation. Uh, they videoed that, they talked about that and they actually were one of, of 16 finalists nationwide. It is a really prestigious award. Um, I'm really proud of them and it's uh, featured in this uh, article of the Houston Chronicle and they all received uh, uh, scholarships to go with that and um, also were able, the grant from the Lexus Eco Challenge paid for some of the landscape fabric that we used in our uh, molting project. We also had another group of students that worked through EcoRise. This is a really cool organization because they're trying to get kids to be leaders in generating environmental change in their um, communities. They had to write a grant. That is to me some of the most valuable experience. It's a real grant process. They have to write the grant. They have to um, get it um, approved by a committee. Um, and they were able to do that. And they raised $700 to put trash cans out in our uh, prairie. And those will be coming in the fall. Now all of the seeds that we've used, they are all um, donated to us, Bamert Seed Company, USDA, Texas Rice and Turner Seed Company. All of these uh, seed companies gave us, helped us kind of design what species of plants we wanted to plant, how we wanted to plant them, and we're still consulting with them now about how our plants are doing. That was uh, really great as well. So last but not least, we have the kind of the, the grand finale of our whole thing we're, we're going to finish this our plan that we had from the beginning is complete except for the outdoor classroom furniture that has uh Kane Island has donated the money it's already in process we are already ordering the furniture enough for 32 students to sit out under this big oak tree teachers can take their kids out there they can enjoy the scenery work on a lesson read take a quiz whatever um, and that kind of makes our outdoor classroom complete so I hope you've liked these videos and I hope you, um, if you see any of these great sponsors, tell them thank you um, because without their, their support, this just would not have been possible.